3D printing, right? And it's cool because you can make plastic, you can now make metals. It's interesting, but wouldn't it be cool if we could also have a 3D printer uh, to make living creatures? Something that was affordable so that anyone anywhere in the world could come up with an idea in their head for a new interesting creature, say a little dinosaur that walks around on your desk, right, that you can just print out. Who wants, who wants one of those? Anybody? I do. Um, so there's a, a few key technologies underlying our ability to do what we do. One is Moore's Law, and uh, if you've been around Ray Kurzweil for more than five minutes, you've probably heard something about that. Um, there's also something called DNA sequencing, uh, and usually I like to repeat the same thing every time I give it to talk, but who knows how much DNA sequencing was 10 years ago for a human genome? Robin. Yeah, it was uh, about a dollar a letter, so humans with three billion letters would cost three billion. Who knows the cost of sequencing now? Robin. Yeah, a couple thousand, right? So it's three million times cheaper in roughly, I think, seven years. Uh, we have an issue with that riding a human, how much is a human? How much do you cost, sir? Yeah. Well, I'm not talking about you, talking about him. Um, Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So a, a human is uh, is about three billion dollars. This is kind of it's expensive, um, and plants are even more. Yeah. Of just the DNA material. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. If we, if we sell if we sell you in a, you know in the butcher shop or something, um, but. Um, so <clears throat> what we've done is we've created a technology that makes the ability to write DNA the same cost as read DNA. Currently, writing is uh, three million times more expensive than reading. By making them the same cost, everything becomes programmable. So our printers print out memory. And then that memory is, is software code. And we actually sell the most popular software in the world uh, it's amazing. We actually now have um, 7 billion users. Each one of those 7 billion users has over a trillion installs. So we currently are selling the most popular software in the world. So congratulations to me. Uh, next one. So um, who knows about like, the video game Spore? Will Wright, SimCity. So in Spore, you come up with like a, a single cell. You start with the single cell. You can make a small little, uh, you know, small multicellular life that becomes, uh, you know, a recognizable creature that can breed and make other creatures, and they eventually become intelligent, and they leave the planet, and they go colonize other planets, uh, all starting from a single cell. I thought that was a, a pretty cool idea. And I said, well, what if we could make Spore happen in real life? So that's what we did. Uh, we've created a, a program called Creature Creator that allows anyone in the world to come up with an idea of a cool creature, be it a dinosaur, a microbe that lives on the surface of Mars and produces oxygen, um, whether it's a, a bacteria that produces an oil, whether it's a, a pet food that has bacteria in it that makes your pet's food you know, it makes his crap smell like uh, roses or cinnamon or wintergreen or banana. Currently, we do wintergreen and banana flavors. If you guys want a sample, just come by afterwards. Um, so because the reading and the writing of DNA is so cheap, with the reading, we have access to all the code libraries that exist on the planet, right? Everything that exists is a library of interesting functions that we can use. With writing, we can combine those things in interesting new ways to write interesting new creatures. So how does it work? If you want to come up with a creature, first of all, you've got to be creative. You've got to have an idea. Most people are not creative, so they fail in the first one. But if you are a creative person, it's pretty easy to come up with an idea. Say, for instance, a pigeon that poops uh, like street cleaner or something like that. Anyway, come up with an idea. Then do your design of your creature using a software called Genome Compiler. Drag and drop your logic blocks. It's a visual programming language. You don't really need to know more than 
I don't know, maybe two hours of biology to be able to use it. And then print your creature out, put it into a cell, and, and see how it works. So one of the first creatures we did was a glowing plant. It's a plant and it glows. Right? That's kind of cool. People now have new interesting ideas about where we can go from there. But this plant actually glows. We took the, the firefly pathways, right? We, we wrote those sequences. We changed a, a promoter or whatever that causes the, the DNA to turn into RNA into protein. And we put it into a plant, and now the plant uh, produces what's called a luciferase. It processes luciferin and emits light. So for three billion years that plants have existed on this planet, they haven't glowed. Fireflies have glowed. There's some uh, other uh, dianoflagellates in the ocean that glowed. But plants never did. Three billion years, they didn't glow. Now they do. So we solved that problem. Right? There's lots of other interesting ones to solve. <clears throat> I'm not going to go too much into the details of how the technology works, but the basics are is that we make trillions of uh, molecules on a microarray, trillions of strands of DNA. Of those, we sample about a billion. We sequence those billion on a next-gen sequencer. And if they're correct, if they're the ones that we program, and then we print them out. So this is the first gene we made you know, a, a few months ago. Now we're making many genes, larger constructs, uh, and eventually whole genomes and whole organisms. So here's the machine we use to make the DNA. Here's an example of a sequencing run. Basically, you're looking at four different colors for the four different uh, basic pairs. And then you're using a laser to pick Injector. off and select the uh, correct this sequences. Is the here is the scope. It and I like to sing, so I do science here and sing at the, the same time. This is what mad scientists do. And we use the lab, the we go kind of crazy. Video. It's late at night. Yeah. Uh, but these are beads, yeah. these are sequences. There. There's about a billion of now unique there. sequences. There. On a plate, we can recover them using a laser. It's called laser pulse catapulting, our laser induced forward transfer. Our laser tissue microdissection, about 50 other names, it's been around since the 70s. We're just kind of stealing a lot of existing technologies, reformatting them to get them to work. After you make the DNA, you've got lots of little pieces, 100 base pair pieces. You use a robot to take those small little pieces, assemble them into a large gene size construct. Each human has got about 25,000 genes. So these genes range from 500 letters to around 4,000 letters use a robot to put small pieces like Lego blocks, snap them together into larger pieces. Uh, here's uh, us doing it really fast. So we use uh, a laser. We also uh, use a Galvo mirror. So it's the same laser that you see in the club that can direct a, uh, a light beam around really quickly. So here we're writing out DNA. So it's capable of hitting 50,000 uh, unique locations in a single second, which is pretty insane, but that's off-the-shelf technology. It's the same laser that's used to engrave stuff on iPhones. So here's a recent party we had. Uh, you now here's some of the team. Uh, right now we're about 10 people. A bunch of crazy millionaires gave us millions and millions of dollars. I mean, we've almost raised more money than this place, which is pretty crazy. Um, uh, and we're using that to build a factory for producing DNA uh, at the same cost that you can read it so that Everyone in the world, including all of you guys, can download software, design interesting creatures, and we can get Jurassic Park to happen in real life. All right. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'm going to set a high bar. We're only going to take one question, and then we're going to move on to the next presentation. So if you're going to ask a question, make it good. Make it sort of with the room. Who wants to take that challenge? All right, we'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've raised uh, almost, what, almost $5 million now. Um, maybe we'll raise more, maybe we won't. Um, but if you're interested um, in coming by and checking out our place and taking some DNA home, then you can come by. That's fine. We're in uh, San Francisco, right next to the Giant Stadium at uh, Townsend and 3rd. So if, you wanna, if anybody here is interested, just come in. You know, We'll let you shoot stuff with the laser, bring your kids. You know, it's integrated with Xbox controllers, so it's pretty easy to use. Thank you, Austin. Great job. <laughs> <laughs>